G'day. Miles Whitaker here. The National President of the Party of Australia. And number two, Senate candidate for Queensland. So I'm going live today to give a quick message to our members, volunteers and supporters to say thank you for uh, everything that we've done in the lead up to the election. So I'm going to go through a few points, uh, a few catch up from the election, some retrospectives, some thoughts and some ideas. I'm probably not going to keep going too long, but I'd like to get some messages out there, get some thoughts out there and get us ready on the front foot for the next year, as there's a lot going on. There has been a lot going on and we absolutely need to be on the forefront for it. So first off, I'd like to do a quick update on the vote results. So I'll just go straight into the numbers first before we have a look at this. So the Queensland with 43.2% counted for the Senate election. The current party Australia received 6,942 votes, which is our primary votes, which is 0.5%. And for us, that's a swing of 0.14%. In New South Wales, with 52.6% counted for the Senate vote, there is a primary of 9,463 to the Pirates, which is 0.4%, and that's a swing of 0.12% to us. In Victoria, with 42.9% of the vote counted, there's a primary vote of 7,362, which is 0.4% of the vote and a swing of 0.06. In West Australia, with 53.9% counted, we have a primary vote of 5,124, which is 0.6% of the vote, and that is a swing of 0.6%. Congratulations, Australia. So I'll go through that again in a moment, uh, but with the raw numbers, we're seeing a fantastic result with roughly half of the vote counted, and we'll see the rest of that resolved over the coming few days with preference flow. It will probably be delayed, and there's been some interesting things happening with minor party preferences this election. <coughs> but I think we can see this trend holding of a significant swing to the Pirates above all previous votes and previous elections that we've been in. And this is a really, really encouraging result, a really positive result. So this is due to the campaigning that we've done and the messaging that we've done and the energy put in by all of our candidates in the lead up to the election. We've always been seen as a fringe party, as a minor party, as a, in many, many times as a joke party. And so a huge part of our messaging and our challenge over the years has been to overcome that, has been to overcome that image of a, a throwaway vote, that we have preferential voting in Australia for a reason. And one of the main messages, which I want to take away from this, and I want to give to all of our members and supporters in the Pirates, is that we, our issues are not being addressed. That there is no political party and no candidates who address the issues which we care about, privacy, surveillance, copyright reform, technology, and common sense economic reform, among various other positions. And so it's absolutely essential that we fit the role that we fill in Australian politics, which is even if we don't get elected, we can still advocate for our positions. We can still put pressure on other parties, major and minor, to reform their positions. And we can still have a presence to say, we exist and what we're doing is absolutely important. So I'm going to just go over those numbers again for everyone still tuning in. Uh, thank you so much for everyone coming on. We are, uh, this is, this is live, obviously, so please feel free to add comments or questions in chat. And I'll be posting the link around as well for, um, on a couple of our social media pages. What I'm encouraging, or what we're getting all candidates to do over the coming week will be to go do video retrospectives and video check-ins and thank yous. So last night we heard from Sarah Joyce, who is a New South Wales candidate for Senate and watching the election results and over the coming days we'll hopefully hear from Victoria and West Australia and all of our other candidates as well. So please feel free do put questions in chat and let's let's have a conversation because this conversation is important and needs to be had. Now let me quickly go through this these results again. 
So Queensland, so in all states, roughly half of the Senate vote has been counted. In Queensland, we have 0.5% primary vote of just under 7,000, which is a swing of 0.14% towards the pirates in Queensland. In New South Wales, there is nearly 10,000 primary votes, which is 0.4%, and a swing of 0.12% towards the pirates. In Victoria, there's just over 7,000 primary votes, which is 0.4%, and a swing of 0.06 towards the Pirates. And in West Australia, just over 5,000 primary votes, which is 0.6%, and that is a swing of 0.6% towards the Pirates in West Australia. This is a really exciting result, and we're all really, 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 really encouraged and cheered on by it. So all candidates that I've spoken to and all volunteers that I've spoken to have all had really positive messages, both immediately before the election and immediately after the election. We knew we didn't have a realistically high chance of getting elected, but we did know that we had to do it anyway. And so I think these, these swings to the Pirates, which are significant, we're talking, um, we're talking close to a 10 or 20% increase in our overall vote from previous elections, that represents the hard work which we've all been putting in. So please don't check my math there. Uh, as you can hear, I've had quite a few drinks last night. There was some wild election after parties. It was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, what wasn't so fun was the overall election result. So with the coalition getting back in, uh, it's obviously not that the vote hasn't finalized yet, but the chance for Labor minority government is inc increasingly low. So this has a lot of repercussions for us and is sending a strong message to politics in Australia and, and various political parties. Now, with the LNP, with their various positions, various policies, are a problem. It is a big problem, as they've led the way on increasing copyright protectionism, on increasing surveillance and increasing oppression of Australian people, cutting out privacy, attacking encryption, and attacking civil society, civic society bodies, and non-profits, and volunteering making it increasingly hard, and not to mention their corruption, the democratic process through their corporatist positions, tax cuts, support for big business, and the sheer vast amount of lobby money they take from big business. So there's a lot of changes we will need to take away from this election if we're going to keep attacking the LNP's positions and keep holding pushing them and pushing, what's more, pushing Labor and the Greens to hold them to account because, as I said before, there is no political party or candidate in Australia that actually represents the issues which we pirates care about. The Greens don't fully encapsulate them. The Labor Party is at times openly antagonistic and hostile towards our positions, in particular with the assistance and access bill at the end of last year, start of this year, with warrantless surveillance. There was no fight on that at all from Labor no fight at all and um, the liberals and the conservatives were obviously cheering it on enthusiastically so there's some strategies and some changes we need to make going forward the i have four key ideas which i want to bring forward the first thing i think that we as the pirates need to be doing most importantly most strongly is working on our overall marketing and promotion. So th this boils down to a few points. The, the first point is that our, promote, our, our political messaging needs to be more cohesive and more tight. So when talking to volunteers in the lead up, I, and, and other candidates have been talking to volunteers as well, we have a lot of new volunteers and members this election. Congratulations, welcome, and thank you so much for joining the Pirate Party. When talking to those volunteers, myself and the other candidates and, and veteran party members, have have explained our policies and we've talked about our policies and we've um, given intros to various things as obviously our policy is very niche many of our policies are very niche they're hard to understand even for many people who support the pirates we have some relatively obscure positions but ones which are supported strongly by evidence and supported strongly by uh, by people who are experts in their subject field whether that's technology economics, human rights, so on and so forth. So my, 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 my number one point is that our political messaging needs to be more cohesive. So we need to look at our policy and say, okay, what does this actually mean? How can we communicate this? So number two, which is 
basically a tie-in to number one. Uh, that is more video and image content. We need more graphical content. We need audio visual content to help to help encourage our ideas. If we can have cohesive and tight and clear messaging on our policies, then this audio visual content will be very, very easy. It is as simple as putting up a colored background post on Facebook, that annoying as whatever thing with some sweet, cool slogans across it that actually tie into our policy. And the key point here, which I want to, I want to bring this back to the election briefly. There's a key point here, which is that all the volunteers that I spoke to and the booth that I went to and the booth that other candidates and volunteers went to, the messaging from the Liberal Party and the Labour Party was negative. It was attacking each other, it was attacking other candidates and other policies. Uh, something like three quarters of the Liberal National propaganda was the uh, w was just attacking Bill Short and it was purely character assassination and we absolutely cannot have this approach in our own marketing. We absolutely have to have a positive message and a constructive message for what the changes we want to make to Australia. So so those who went out there, you remember some of the slogans from the LNP, which were things like, um, it'll be um, the bill that Australia can't afford. That was that was the main one that I saw. And there was just huge long 10 meter banners and huge posters with Bill Shorten's face on them, making a, you know, caught in a grimace or something. And, and you can just imagine storm clouds and grim music playing in the background. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was very, very poorly thought out. It was lowest common denominator marketing, and it was very, very. Uh, it's the dumbing down of political dialogue in this country, and that's honestly that's one thing we're fighting against more than anything. We believe in bringing honesty back to politics and evidence-based, informed opinion and, and decision making back to politics, and that's in opposition to everything that the LNP has stood for in this election and in previous elections and over the next few years. So I don't want to say it's too much better with the Labour Party either, as um, the slogan which I heard from La Labour volunteers was uh, no more cuts and chaos, which is again a, a purely a, a an attack on the LNP with no substance and, and no, and no backing, no, no positive messaging, nothing. Uh, reconstructive or constructive, nothing informed or informative about politics in this country. And so there, there was a, it was a little bit better for the ALP for some of the messaging, but again, there's so many things which the LNP is doing wrong and, and you have to dumb down your messaging to that point where you're degrading the, the, the political dialogue. Well, no, I don't want to do that at all. And we as pirates are absolutely not doing that at all. So going back to my recommendation for the party going forward, more case of time messaging on one, number two, more audio visual content. So audio visual content, I'm talking about memes. We need meme warriors, we need meme creators on our side, out there creating memes, doing memes, doing cool stuff, and putting that out there for people to look at and follow. So just responding to a couple of points in chat, uh, your Bash Newsroom, thank you. We, we work very hard on our policy over the years. We have many very, very excellent writers who've contributed to our policy over the years and have built that up. And so, yes, uh, I totally agree and we all agree. We're really proud of our policy. That's why we're pirates. That's why we're in the Pirate Party of Australia, that, that we have sound evidence and science-based policy, which you can explain to people and they will go, oh, that sounds really good. And nine times out of 10 new members will look at our policies and, and, and say, oh, I thought you had a silly name, but I checked your policies and they're actually quite reasonable and quite good. So now I'll support you. So why are we getting only 0.5% of the vote in all the elections we run in? Partly because of the name, partly also because of our messaging. We need to work on that slick, cohesive messaging and slick, cohesive audiovisual content to help get that out there. So uh, thank you, Kate Resork, for your kind words, and Moni McGrabby. <clears throat> so the ALP and the LP love to call each other liars and talk about each other as liars. We need to put aside that kind of rhetoric and we need to have a positive mission and uh, a positive vision. And here in Queensland, I'm endlessly in awe of the Greens, what the Greens are doing with their messaging and their marketing and their campaigning. I think they do it very, very well. But obviously they're not doing it around issues which we care about. They're not doing it around our issues and they're not doing it in a way that captures our issues.
So we absolutely can offer a, a third party alternative to the Greens from the sensible center or from the center left, which addresses the issues we care about, such as privacy and, and technology. So one of the things I'm, I want moving forward is calling on all members and supporters in the party to come forward and help out with this new messaging, to help out with, with ways we can express our content through images, through memes, through graphics, through videos, through trailer promos, uh, through music. If you have any kind of artistic or creative skill, we want you and we need you. And more importantly, creative production is a, is a key part of, of our founding issue of copyright reform. As we've always said, we want culture and content to be open and free. And so if we can create that culture and create that content, we can be that change and put it out there in the world for Australians and, and other supporters and, and people around the world to experience that content. <clears throat> so that's the call I'm putting out to all members and supporters of the party. And we've done that before to huge success. If you're a musician or an artist, please do come forward. So point number three, my third recommendation for the party moving forward, my third call to action, is that I think we need clearer ideological and, and political linking between our positions. So I think we need to explore more ways we can link our policies together cohesively with our values and principles. This will be, this is more of a long-term project. This is something which people who are familiar with political, political theory and who are familiar with the political history of our policies and how they've performed will need to analyze that and, and come up with ways of altering, modifying our platform and altering, modifying our messaging so that we can tie our platform more tightly together, more cohesively together politically with an ideological backing. And then we can go out and say, yes, I am this. I am, I, I'm a, I believe in pirate politics. And that can be utterly independent of the party. That can be independent of any pirate party. You can go out and get other parties to support our politics and the approach we take on them which is broadly speaking, left libertarian tech progressive. So some writing around that and some theorizing around that to help explore the political traditions which tie into our politics. Um, my, my final strategy or, or call to action going forward is that we as a party need to engage with young people more. And this goes into point one and two in creating more audio visual content, creating more memes but also engaging with gamers, engaging with schools, engaging with young people and youth spaces and being able to bring them to the fore and explore their issues and let them know how they can get involved in pirate politics and support pirate politics. So what we'll need to do is start up groups at universities uh, young pirate clubs will need to start having content creation going out memes and in games and gaming events where we can attract young people and we'll need to integrate this into our platform and integrate this into our policies so those are my four main strategic targets moving forward for the pirates and there's some call to action in there so we need to see content creators for image and video stepping forward to work on our policies and get them into a way that is easily understandable and easily communicatable. So that although I hate sloganeering for the ALP and LP, and I will fight it down, fight it as dumbing down the political discourse, we do need to have cohesive messaging. We do need to have easy ways to communicate that and easy ways for people to understand that. So that our volunteers can express our pol policies and interested people can understand our policies. Now, another call to action is more organizers. We need people stepping forward who are willing to organize events, organize crews and organize meetups. And this is something we tried very hard to do in the lead up to the election, where we had organizers stepping up to organize volunteers in their area to go out to polling booths, to talk to voters, to go to events, to talk to the media, to do all kinds of cool things. We need to keep that energy going. We need to keep that momentum going and keep growing the pirate movement. So the way to do that will be by organizing these crew meetups, by having local volunteers step up and say, what's happening in my area? There's nothing happening. Okay, that means 
I need to organize something. It's on me. So the, the principles of direct democracy, the principles of swarmwise organizing, and the principles of holistic organizing all call for when something needs to be done and someone identifies that, they're then volunteering to do that. And so if you see something you think needs to be done for the pirates, we are direct democratic. You can go out and do that. And it is your responsibility on you as an individual to make sure that what you're doing helps the pirates and helps our cause, that it doesn't damage our image, that it fits and is coherent with our politics and our imaging and our message. That is our responsibility as individuals, as pirates and organizers for the pirates. And we've taken big strides over the past few years in streamlining and removing bureaucracy, particularly with the formation of the Pirate Bureau about two and a half years ago. With the Bureau, we streamlined our authorization processes and made it easier for people to create content. It's now very easy. You can uh, simply message the National Council or post into the Bureau on the Discus forum, which all, people, all members have access to. And from there, your content gets authorized and it can be distributed in whatever format. So we've got a question here from your Bash in the Tram. Do you have a state party or plans for just federal government? Absolutely, we would like to be state registered. Unfortunately, we don't have the members. So the requirements vary from state to state. In Queensland, the requirement is 500 registered members. We have roughly, uh, slightly over 300 members in Queensland. So we are short of that target. In New South Wales, I believe there's a target of 1,000 members. And we, are, we only have about, I believe around six or 700. So again, we're short of that number. So what we need is more members, more members in the party, more supporters coming forward to create content so that we can attract more members, more organizers creating events so that supporters and volunteers can come along and become members. So this is an ongoing effort. We absolutely do have a target to be state registered. And I'll put in a quick call here about candidate fees and candidate registration and party registration. That requires money, large amounts of money for the election, for the federal election, our candidate registration fees were $2,000 per person. That means we had to drain our bank account and go through a massive fundraising campaign just to get our candidates onto the ballot without even putting money into merchandise or flyers or t-shirts or promotions or ads or anything. The vast majority of our spending has just been on fees to register our candidates. So running in state elections will take a lot more donations, a lot more fundraising than we currently have. But I'm confident that if we can increase our member size and increase our volunteers, then that funding and those donations will follow, that energy will follow, and we will have the means. Thank you so much for all of your support there during the crowdfunding campaign in the lead up and for everyone who volunteered as well. So everyone has different ways of contributing, whether monetarily, volunteering, organizing, or otherwise. And I highly encourage everyone to consider how you can help change the face of Australian politics. Because with this election being called for the coalition at approximately nine o'clock last night, it was clear that despite all the wins and all the gains that the Pirate Party has made in this election, that we are not doing enough, anywhere near enough, to have a meaningful effect on Australian politics. And we need to be working harder and smarter in getting our messages out there and growing the Pirate movement. So I'll quickly recap those four strategic calls that I put out earlier. I think that number one, we need to have our policies be more cohesive and have a tighter messaging around them. So if we can, with those policies, if we can get them to be easy, more easily communicated and more easily understood, then that is a win for us. And that's a way we can we can help counter the notion that we aren't a joke party, that we aren't a single issue party, that what we're doing is in fact important and what we're doing is in fact serious. So point number two is that we need to have more video and image content. We need to have more audio visual content. We need creators for this. We need artists, we need creative people who can, who can contribute in this way, who can make images, who can make videos and trailers, and people who can make music, compose music. 
we've always had supporters, artists, artists supporting the party. We've had many musicians supporting the party, create music in the past for us and create various art. We need to keep that trend going so we can keep getting our message out there. Point number three is to link our policies together with tighter ideological and political theory backing. And that will take assistance and input from people who understand the history of our policies and the history of political theory, who can integrate these with our policies more tightly together so that we can be more clearly understood as a, as a unique political tradition in Australia today. And already the European pirates are being described as having um, a political alignment of pirate politics, which doesn't fully align to any left-right axis. Uh, and it can be best described as left libertarian and tech progressive, which is something which many pirates do identify, but that's something we need to explore and explain more clearly. So my calls to action are for more organizers to organize events more content creators and writers to contribute to things and to start the Young Pirates of 2019 where we start attracting younger people to the movement through gaming, through games, through memes and through other audiovisual content. So we've got a question in chat from Roger Watling. Pirate Party has focused on policies that other parties don't cover, primarily digital rights and freedoms. Will pirates expand their official policy to cover the major political issues such as climate change, domestic violence, environmental protection and jobs? Some of these areas are already covered by pirate policy, in particular climate change. We supported a 50% reduction of emissions by 2030. This recommendation has, um, th this policy has not met with recent recommendations from environmental groups which support a 100% reduction by 2030. 100% is obviously very ambitious, but at the same time, the crisis we're facing with the climate change is also uh, equally alarming and imminent. So that is potentially a stance we'll need to take on and, and various environmental updates we'll need to update on that in our policy. Uh, we had a question in, in the last week in the lead up to the election when the Queensland candidates had a Facebook Live Q&A. We also had a question about domestic violence and my running mate Brandon Selleck had a lot to say about that as a community legal aid lawyer for 10 years and I'd highly recommend you to go back and, and watch that video and hear his response there and how we can update our platform to meet that. The summary of it is there is a huge backlog in our courts, primarily family courts, where the uh, domestic violence cases are held. And so a, any, any, any policy changes to address domestic violence would need to first and foremost address this huge issue, or, or at least address it as a matter of priority to help reduce that backlog so that um, cases in family courts can go ahead. Uh, environmental protection, we have a strong policy, but we've received recommendations to approve it, which we will be looking at. Uh, jobs policy, we actually support a federal jobs guarantee. And this is one of our more unusual policies. You can find out about it in, uh, in our policy on the wiki, which is available for anyone to read. And from there, you'll be able to um, put, explore it. But again, we need people. We need people producing content and messaging to to better express that. Now, before I go, there is one last major announcement I need to make which is that the work doesn't stop here for the pirates. We cannot rest here. This election has been a huge drain, a, a huge emotional and physical drain with our candidates out pre-polling and letterboxing for weeks in advance of the election and all of our volunteers, the huge contributions they've made during the election itself and also the amount of donations which have gone into this campaign and the emotional investment people have put into these campaigns. But this isn't over. This is the start of another three years before the next federal election. And before that, we have state elections and council elections with our, with our goal of, of getting state registered in all states. Uh, hopefully at some point, then we can't simply ignore those. We need to have positions on those and be active in the debate around those elections. Now, the most immediate upcoming event which we as pirates and as the pirate movement need to be aware of is National Congress is imminent. It will be at the end of July. That is 
approximately one and a half months away, a bit over one month. Now, our deadlines for policy change will be coming up very, very shortly as well. So for those of you who are considering contributing to the party through writing or political theory or policy development, now is the time to immediately get in and start working as we'll be announcing the deadline for um, for submissions and for the date for Congress over the coming weeks. And it will be very, very close. It's unfortunate the election fell when it did as it put us on a tight timeline for Congress. However, the party exists outside of the election and we will continue despite this disappointing election result overall. Now, the there are separate deadlines for constitutional amendments and policy amendments. All I can suggest is going forward, we'll be looking at all policy pledges that we were asked to make in the lead up to the election by advocacy and NGO groups. And we'll be analyzing those and we'll be publicly, I'd like to publicly post all of those for our members to consider and to review. And for those we believe that fit with our platform, we'll be amending those and integrating those into policy proposals in our platform to be submitted before National Congress in July. And we will need people in there analyzing these pledges and, and writing potentially writing policy amendments or policy proposals based off these pledges. And there we received many, many requests for pledges. We were on multiple policy scorecards where we did better or worse. And it's, it's very much clear to me that from our, simply from our policy responses to these scorecards and these pledges, that we have significant changes which do need to be made to our platform to bring them into line to the recommendations from subject matter experts and advocacy groups. And, and so we can continue our, our push to say that our policy is backed by evidence and that we have hold evidence-based policy most foremost. And so among these, there are a number of key issues. The most, one of the most pressing, I believe, which is environment and climate. But additionally, we need to talk about social issues such as Centrelink. Uh, in particular, we'll need to talk about transitionary periods from Centrelink towards universal basic income. So there's a large campaign to raise New Start, which has been ongoing for several years. So from there, we, uh, I believe we should we would support a raise to New Start. Additionally, supporting a policy amendment to increase the amount for our UBI. Obviously, our environmental, our environmental protections could be improved based on the recommendations from the Places You Love Alliance. And our climate change policy, we've re received recommendations from Pilar and the Australian Conservation Foundation and other groups to strengthen our climate change policy. Um, the settling campaigns coming from ACOS, Australian Council of Social Services. We, um, there are also many, many other policy areas as well, which I'm forgetting, which we'll need to analyze and improve and work on. And so I'll be calling on all party supporters and members to uh, in the coming weeks to analyze these pledges and to prepare new policy proposals to be to be reviewed at national congress and and to be voted on by the party now a few final words about congress it'll be in adelaide this year adelaide south australia now this is a little bit out of the way we haven't had a congress here before which is why we chose it we wanted to give the the western states a bit of love and we wanted to uh, uh, spread out a little bit and try something new and different because uh, we we have we do have pirates in Adelaide we do have a pirate presence there we have supporters and members all throughout the state and so as we are the technology party it is fully fully feasible and viable for us to hold Congress wherever we like as of course it is fully online enabled and there are a number of innovations around that technology which we have and will continue to make so in particular We've been experimenting with new methods of organizing, digital organizing and outreach. And so one of my suggestions for National Congress this year is that we, for our remote participants, we add an audio visual option. So remote participants in the past have participated via IRC, Internet Relay Chat. And what they've done is when they want to lodge a comment on the floor, they will formally make that comment and the remote chair in person will read that comment out on the floor. I think this is no longer sufficient. We have had the technology for some time and we have the means to do this. And so I think for this National Congress, what I will be attempting to bring into operations is for remote attendees, if they wish, to, to, have, to have that, to use that method where 
they write their comment or question in text and then have that read out on the floor. However, I want to add another option where instead what they'll be able to do is fire up their webcam and or their mic and then address the floor in person with image and, and with audio. I believe this is an important next step we have in enabling direct democracy through technology and in our processes. Uh, just addressing quickly a question in chat, do we accept cryptocurrencies for contribution? Unfortunately, it's against AEC donation regulations. All donations must be declared and public. So I know Flux accepts cryptocurrency donations and they require you to declare your donation publicly or, or to them. So we could implement a similar process and we would have to have a similar requirement that if you make a cryptocurrency donation, you would have to declare it. And if there's an, uh, with a, if there's a failure to properly declare like your cryptocurrency donation, we would have to refuse it or or pass it on to another advocacy group. Most most likely donate it to a group such as Electronic Frontiers Australia or Digital Rights Watch, one of our supporting non part one of our nonpartisan groups which support our platform. So that's also a recommendation which I want to take on board and implement in the party to accept cryptocurrency donations. Now, I have a final message today. Um, please feel free to put your questions or comments in the chat about the election or the Pirate Party moving forward. My final comment is that uh, it has now been one year for me as the national president of Pirate Party Australia. I've been with the party since its founding in 2008. Uh, don't worry, this isn't a resignation announcement. I'm just setting a bit of context here. So as, as we're coming to the end of my first year as president and also my first year as a candidate in an election, there's a lot of messages and a lot of things I've learned. And there's a lot of things I've done wrong, mistakes I've made and, and things which I have done right as well. There's many things I've tried to innovate in and change the way we've done things. At times this has ruffled feathers or at times this has turned out badly. But that's the that's always the case with change, particularly progressive change or technology related change it is disruptive, inherently disruptive. And that means there is risks along the way. And I believe firmly that we as the pirates understand those risks related to technology, understand those risks related to digital organizing, and we are willing to take those risks now and moving forward. So my message there is that we must innovate or die. We must change our processes and evolve. or We will aid into irrelevance and will cease to be relevant as a political movement in Australia or elsewhere. And so with those changing methods, some of the changes that I brought in include Discord. We now have a Discord server and, and we've been pushing it hard throughout the election and we will continue to do so. And I want to increasingly switch our organizing over to Discord or similar platforms, which are easier to use, have a better interface, have better text and audio integration, and it's uh, easier for organizing and people are more on as well. I've also pushed Facebook using Facebook more for organizing. We have organizing groups on Facebook, which have received, which have been very, very active. We push more content on Facebook and over the coming year with an, at my new strategic focus for audio visual content, we will have more content going out on Facebook and we'll also, we, sh we need to create an Instagram account. So we need content creators to assist with that. And if you can ass assist with social media content as well, just text or sharing links, then we also need your help. And please do step forward and volunteer. Particularly Instagram as I already have too many accounts there. So I don't need any more, thank you. I'm happy with Twitter for the moment. Now, these changes have been ongoing and the changes in our organizing methods have also been ongoing. I think the key and the most strongest point moving forward in changes that we need to make is more local organizing, supported and enabled by technological and digital methods through using Facebook, various Facebook features such as Facebook Live, which we've started using through this campaign, but also through using Discord and Facebook chats and putting out more social media, audio visual content on social media. That is a way we can change our methods, we can reach larger and new audiences, we can get our message out there, we can communicate our politics and our policies, and we can keep 
pushing the pirate movement to change the face of Australian politics. Sky, we would love your help. Please do. If you are a member, jump on our forums and post up some of your ideas on a thread there. Post some content, some test content you'd like to make. And please do recognize that we operate on direct democratic principles, which means everyone can have a say and everyone can contribute. And that is one of the key ideas behind pirate politics, where we are fair, we are even, we are non-hierarchical, and that anyone who wants to contribute can and should be able to. If you have ideas for content, don't ask for permission. Only be aware that it is your responsibility, that that content you make fits with pirate politics, that it helps the pirate movement in Australia, that it does not damage the image of the pirate movement in Australia. That we place that emphasis on you as the individual. That you, but we also believe that you have the ability, each one of you out there, as supporters and volunteers and members, you all have the ability to contribute. And you all have ways you can contribute. You all have valuable, unique skills and experience through which you can contribute. And we need all those contributions now more than ever. So thank you very much to everyone who has tuned in today. I'll be ending the live stream shortly. If there's any final questions or comments, please put them in chat and I'll, I'll try and get to them. Now we have had thoughts from various other candidates speaking forward. And over the coming week, I will be getting more retrospectives of getting the candidates to speak out and talk about their campaigns and talk about the things which they've done right and the things which they've done wrong and things they think they can improve. We have had fabulous uh, incredible efforts from all of our candidates. Uh, I'd like to, particularly, I'd like to highlight the New South Wales campaign of Sarah Joyce and the West Australia campaign of Clive Myers as my personal favourites with the amount of effort that they two have put in. But all of our candidates have done some amazing work. So we'll be seeing retrospectives from them over the coming week. Additionally, I'd like to see crew meetups in all states where volunteers can meet to discuss and organize what they're doing in coming weeks and coming months. And finally, with National Congress in July, I want to encourage everyone to consider going to Adelaide, or if you're in Adelaide, coming along to, to National Congress in person. If that's not feasible, simply tune in online, and participate online, and hopefully we'll have increased audio visual options this year where you can address the floor in person using voice chat or video chat if you want. I want to fully enable and support that. Uh, we have policy amendments and review and analysis which needs to be done by Congress. We're on a very short timeline for that. So please stay tuned and, and keep an eye out for those policy pledges we've been given. And finally, the National Council will be up for election come this Congress. We will have some members stepping down most likely and we will have new members stepping forward. I highly encourage everyone who is interested in the pirate movement and who is interested in developing your organizing skills or your administration skills or you want to take the next step in contributing to the party, then place your nomination for the National Council. We have several positions. There's President, obviously, Secretary and Treasurer are the three core positions, and they all have deputies as well, which makes a total of six positions. Additionally, we have two National Councillors who, uh, who are there to provide additional input and guidance towards the Council. So please, all of you consider running for National Council if you are at all interested. I highly encourage everyone to do so. The more candidates we have for National Council positions, then the more diversity we have in that contest and the more competition we have. So our elected officers and candidates will, will push to do more for the party and work harder for the party. At this stage, I intend to re-nominate for president and I've had expressions of interest from several other party members as well who are also interested in, in nominating or renominating for the first time or for a repeat time. And I am very encouraged by that and I encourage everyone else to consider running for the council as well. Okay. Thanks a lot to everyone who tuned in. Uh, this video will stay up. It can be watched later. And please feel free to share it around or review it. And as always, join the conversation on Discord or in our Facebook group. We have a public chat group 
And as always, we are on Twitter as well. We have a discus forum where you can come in and do more long form talk and discussion. And, and you can also always email in to the National Council, which is provided on our website. Thank you so much, everyone who contributed in this election. And here's to 2019.